Greetings folks, this is a video to get you a little bit more excited about undervolting your graphics card within your laptop. We have four laptop GPUs, the 1660 Ti, the 2060, the 2070 Max-Q, and the 2070 Max-P. Three of them are running all the way up to 115 watts, and the Max-Q 2070 is highest wattage profile at 90 watts. This was done to get the maximum heat soak to create the biggest challenge for me to see if I could overcome that and see what kind of thermal and frame rate performance I could get after the undervolt. Now, depending on what GPU and chassis and so many other variables you have, that's going to dictate your results. So when you look at mine, try not to judge a particular thermal or frame rate performance based on what you see, but rather know that this can be done. You can improve your thermal performance from your graphics card, and you can do this without compromising the frame rate performance of your graphics card as well. Now, what's very unique about all of these here is that every single GPU minus the 2070 Max-Q ran at over one volt at stock. By the time I was done, I had a lot of these running at 0.7 and 0.8 volts in order to just maximize that thermal efficiency without compromising frame rate performance. But with that said, I'm not gonna be revealing any of those numbers as far as the voltages go within the description. Reason being, silicone lottery here, people. You are going to get different results with the same GPU. Take these two laptops, for example. Both feature a 2070 Max-P. The larger chassis below was able to undervolt far better. Welcome to the silicone lottery versus the one up top had a lot more of a challenge. So with that said, I'm only gonna feature the 2070 Max-P up top because there was some thermal things that I had to overcome. And I think it would be really neat to be able to showcase that for you guys and let you know what we have to work with because this is something that I feel like a lot of you are gonna have to deal with as well. All right, let's proceed and then we'll wrap it up. So undervolting your GPU, the thermal headroom of the chassis, there's a lot of things that go into this that's going to dictate your results ultimately. Now you may have noticed the throttling 2070 Max-P on the Max-15 from Electronics, and I did feature that in my review. The reason that you saw two other frequencies was to let you know that you could get this really close before thermal throttling. You could get this a little bit further away and still get pretty good performance right next to stock. Of course, if you wanted to, you could drop the actual voltage and frequency lower and get yourself pretty far away from thermal throttling. Sky's the limit just is going to depend on the silicone lotteries. That does not only apply to CPUs, but just any piece of electronic hardware in the world, especially those that you can change the frequency and voltage on. And furthermore, the chassis that we have and the efficiency that they are going to get, the cooler we can make them run, the better off we are going to be able to produce better voltages for those parts, so on and so forth. It gets very complex, but if you follow that guide, Go over it a few times, you can get some really good thermal performance from your laptops. And, pro tip, you may have great GPU thermal performance, but your CPU may be running hot and you have tried everything under the sun to improve thermal performance on that CPU. If you follow this undervolting guide that I will link in the description below for your GPU and peel off some of that heat from the graphics card, it's going to improve the thermal performance of the CPU since they typically share the same heat sink. All right, folks, that's going to do it. Slap that like button. I'm Bob of all trades, and I'll see you in the next video.